for tape, CDs, DVDs to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2015 Summer Family Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Sunday morning, July the 5th, 2015. Colonel Williams is the speaker of the service teaching on Selim, the image of God. Is this word to you by faith? Second Chronicles 7.14 if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Another word of God. He's given me a few, so just bear with me real quick. I'll get through it. Uh, Psalms 91. Those who live in the shelter of the most, uh, those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your honor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that fly in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though thou I fall at your sight, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes, see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold up your hands to even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and crows. You will crush spirit of lions and serpents on your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a the long life and give them my salvation. Yeah. Hebrews 4, 22 and 24. Throw off the old sinful nature and the former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Psalms 107, 20. He says, He sent out His word and healed them, snatching them from the doors of death. I feel like the Lord was telling me, and I missed my opportunity the other night because I was like, Lord, do you want me to say it? Because you know what? I fear and tremble of ever saying the wrong thing that is not from God. So I said, Father, I want to make sure that this is you. And he gave me another opportunity. So I said, Father, okay, here it is. And this is what I believe by faith, and I'm releasing to you. Let the Holy Spirit convict me. And he put a tug in on your heart saying, I'm talking to you. So if he does, then heed the word of the Lord and then just obey him and what he's telling you for your life. And I also believe that the Lord was saying that my words are not just mere words. They're not just words on a page. He said, my word is tangible. You can touch it. You can feel it. It pierces to the, to the depth of your heart to deliver you and set you yeah. free. But the key thing in 2 Chronicles 7.14, he says that the key thing is humility. It is for you to man, glory be to God, feel the power of the Holy Spirit coming in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I mean, he said that the key is the humility is how I can break. And he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, then that's when Jesus can do something for you in your life. And here's another scripture that's coming to me. It's Acts 28, 25 through 27. It says that the Holy Spirit was right when he said to your ancestors through Isaiah the prophet, go and say to these people, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me, and let me heal them. That's why I go back to humility so that for you to turn to the Lord to let him heal you, you must first humble yourself and pray and seek his face and turn to the wicked things you have done. And then God says, I will heal your land, which means your heart. And that's why the heart is soil. So you don't want the hardness of a desert that's dry and nothing there, no water's there. So I just feel like the Lord says that my word is tangible. And I'm here. And my, my gifts are here to, to use, to deliver you and set you free. But you have to be willing to receive. He says, don't stand like this because how can you receive anything I want to give to you? So he says, open up your hands saying, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. He says, open up your hands and receive. He says, do not leave here. Do not leave here. That saying, he says, go home because man is a time that coming that God is breaking up his people to remnant. And we're going to take back America. And I'm telling you, nothing coming against us that stand because greater that he is in me that he is in the world and I'm 
tell you, man, there is a day, and this is the last thing. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> he told me that there is going to be such a move of the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. He said, my spirit is coming so important because Jesus said, you will do greater things than I did. And I'm telling you, there is because of the people that work here, because of your obedience, because the times you have done this year after year after year, God says, I have seen your faithfulness, and I will come to you, and I will show you my power, and I will fill this place with my glory, and I'm telling you, there will be a living life never before. I'm telling you, there will never be sin. And Jesus said, I'm coming, I'm coming, get ready, get ready, because there is going to be a transformation. I'm telling you, ready, get ready, because the Spirit of God is about to pour out. Amen. You may be seated. I believe the Lord just encouraged his people here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He said, the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah. And, and that contains it all, the encouragement. As well as, maybe there's somebody here that needs to hear this. Because the one thing I'm going to tell you, we've been here year after year after year after year. Sat in the chairs and, and ministered up here. And, but I'm going to tell you, every time we're sitting in those chairs... And there's a minister of God up here. We're looking for the anointing of Jesus to uproot something in us if it needs to come out. Amen? And, 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 and the most humble, and I'm going to tell you, some of the most powerful people that I've ever seen in the Lord have been up here in other places that we go. And every single one of them will be sitting there doing ministry, and you watch them, and they're getting deliverance, and they're glad to get it. Because you reap what you sow. Amen? We're going to take up an offer, and we're going to have a special here. But I, I want to—I want to do uh, just a, something I've observed with a little liberty, if you give it to me. Then. All right, this is like deliverance housekeeping for those that don't know. Okay, this moment today, is Brother Kern is going to come up and minister here in just a bit. Okay. And then there'll be another ministry in between and another ministry. And then if you're here tomorrow, there's another one. You don't know the moment that your life or somebody else's life is about to be changed dramatically. Yeah. All right? So now this is especially for husbands and wives. And praise God and even husbands and wives to be who have this natural affection one for another. Okay? It's good. You should love each other. You should show that affection in the world in a holy way. You should see your affection one for another. But when deliverance is happening, listen to me. When, when he, if brother starts praying, the sister's up here administering, and they start calling out to him, and they're leading you through repentance, and they're calling out the demons, don't hold on to your partner. Don't touch them. Keep your hands to yourself. And, and I'm going to tell you why. This is a time to receive. Holy Spirit is ministered. They're weeping in Christ. That's part of the process that Jeremiah said things are uprooted, torn down, and, and dismantled. And God himself is doing the work. And what happens if we reach over and grab somebody? We stop. It's a distraction. Yes, there's comfort in that. There's a time and a place for that. But listen to me. And, and then when you're, and then you, who may very well be the one that needs it, <laughs> as well as the one that's getting it over here. When you reach over it, you shut yourself off. Okay? So he heed those words. And take these next moments in this day. And tomorrow. We may not listen to me. There's a meeting in September, Lord willing. Amen? We don't have a guarantee we're going to be here. We don't have it. We've heard the warning of the Lord. And, that, and, and so we don't have a guarantee. We are blessed. Thank you, Lord, for every opportunity you have to gather as God's people, especially in a place where we can really be free and be set free and freely give what's been freely given. But we don't have a guarantee that our liberties in this nation are going to extend beyond that time. 
So enjoy these times. And the whole reason, now listen to me, the whole reason to get free. Thank you, Lord, for the peace with God. Thank you, Lord, for the peace with self. Thank you, Lord, for families rebuilt. Thank you for all those things you do in the restoration. But the whole point of it all is so that we can shine like Jesus and be a bold witness out there so that the lost people can see that there's something better. Okay? So take this serious. And somebody said, wherever you're at, be there. (laughs) <laughs> be here be in it let God's love flow to you and let him dig down deep and don't ever assume it's all done because <laughs> it's not all done <laughs> amen and uh, just one second as, as they're ministering here we're going to put baskets up front and uh, listen God said be holy because I'm holy Bible says he's a man of war, so we should do battle and war. God's a giver. So if we're his children, we need to give. So come be blessed in your giving worship the Lord.
He comes out of church every Sunday, stands in the pulpit with a long robe and a long sleeve shirt. Another kid said that, and I love this one. God looks like my grandpa. <laughs> God looks like my grandpa. Let me share a point with you. One day as I walked with my son in hand, he said there are things that I don't understand. How high is the sky? What makes it so blue? And tell me, Dad, what does God look like to you? And I said he looked like a rainbow just after the rain. He is golden as wheat dancing over the plain. He looked like the star when the night's crystal clear. He looks like a baby when mother is near. His face is the moonlight reflected on snow. His hair like a garden where all flowers grow. His heavenly eyes are blue as the sea. My son, that's what God really looks like. His heart's like a mountain, so vast and so strong. That's why all his children have room to belong. His smile is the morning we wake to see. But you, my son, you are what God really looks like to me. And thank you. Give the Lord praise. All right, let's be blessed. Turn to the book of St. John, chapter 4. Let's look at verse 24, please. St. John, chapter 4, verse 24. The Bible says in verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. The Greek word for spirit is pneuma. And it sounds like the translation we get pneumonia, but it's pneuma, which means spirit, Holy Ghost, and it means God. Okay, now turn with me to the book of First Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. That's First Timothy, chapter one. Let's look at verse seventeen. Verse seventeen. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, please. All right, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says, Now unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Look at the word invisible. It comes from the Greek, the Greek word, or atos, which means invisible, Unseen, which cannot be seen. Okay. In John 4, 24, God is a spirit. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 17, it says that he is called the invisible God. Isn't that a blessing? The invisible God. Okay. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's look at verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16. The Bible says, who only have immortality dwelling in the light. Dwelling in the light. Which no man can approach. Unto whom no man have seen nor can see to whom the honor and power for everlasting. Dwelling in the light. I look up that word light in the Greek. It means light and fire. Light and fire. It also means Light and brightness to shine by rays. Verse 16 stands out to us about God. An unapproachable light. And get that in your spirit. God is a spirit. God is the invisible God. And the Bible says that he's what? He's an unapproachable light. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 9, let's look at verse 2, please. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, let's look at verse 2. In Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2, the Bible says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the man of the shadow of death, upon them have the light shine. Now, the Hebrew word for great light is 
Ori. And Ori means a light of heavenly luminaries. It means also a body that gives off light. And when I say body, I'm not talking in the natural realm. I'm talking in the divine dimension. Or a body that gives off light. God is a spirit. God is the invisible God. God is an unapproachable light. How many of you are with me? God is also what? A great light. And I'm another definition for great light is a fiery brilliance. Now that's awesome. That God is what? A fiery brilliance. Turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 33. The book of Exodus, chapter 33. Let's look at verses. Let's look at verse 20 through verse 23. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 20 through 23. In verse 20, the Bible says, And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Verse 21, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Verse 22 says, And it shall come to pass, while my glory pass by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my bite parts, but my face shall not be seen. God is a spirit. God is, is, is invisible. God is an unapproachable light. God is a great light. But the Bible gives us some revelatory insight here. God told Moses, you can't see my face. Was God being descriptive of his divine anatomy? Verse 22, he spoke of his hand. Verse 23, he talked about back parts. Now I want you to stay in the framework of a mentality of divine anatomy. Here's our subject this morning. Our subject is Selim. It's T-S-E-L-E-M. That's a Hebrew word in, in Hebraic thought. Selim. T-S-E-L-E-M. And the subject is Selim, the image of God. The word Selim appears in the Old Testament 17 times. There, there are over 17 references to the Hebrew word Selim in the Old Testament. Now, I told you I had a lot of scripture for you. So let's get started. Turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Let's look at verse 26 and 27. Of Genesis chapter 1. In verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. The Hebrew word for image is selim. T-S-E-L-E-M. Let's make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now look at verse 27 closely. God created man in his self, mm -hmm. in his image. Mm -hmm. In the image or in the self of God created he what? Male and female. Another definition for self is God created male and female in his image, in his likeness, and in his resemblance. Now I want you to think with me. An invisible God, an unapproachable light, a great light, a, a spirit being, a spirit entity. But the Bible says that we were created in his cell. I want you to think with me now. Look at the book of Genesis chapter 5. Let's look at verse 3. The book of Genesis chapter 5. Look at verse 3, please. In verse 3, the Bible says, And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begot a son in his own likeness, 
after his image and called his name Seth. Now, that word likeness in the Hebrew is demot, D-E-M-O-O-T-H, D-E-M-O-O-T-H, which means likeness, similitude, manner, or fashion of. And as a similar reference meaning Hesela, likeness, similitude, like manner, or even a fashion of. God created male and female in his self. Now, many of you are probably saying, well, how can that fit with God being an unapproachable life? Let's keep digging further. And turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 9. Let's look at verse 6. In French, please is poor for all. <laughs> Genesis correction in Spanish is poor for more. So Genesis chapter 9 verse 6, poor for more. Thank you. Okay. All right. Isn't it good to have fun in the Lord? Yeah. <laughs> Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he what? Man. That word image means in the cellum of God made he what? Man. God pronounced the death penalty for anyone who would murder his cellum. God pronounced the death penalty on anyone who would murder his cellum or kill his image. Cellum is the image of God. It's a replica of God's divine appearance. God does not take it lightly when you mistreat his fellows. Isn't that something? This is, this is beautiful. Amen. All right, let's move on. Turn to the book of James, chapter 3. Let's look at verse 9, please. The book of James, chapter 3. Let's look at verse 9. In the book of James, chapter 3, verse 9... The Bible says, Therewith bless me God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are after the similitude of God. Now, the Greek word for similitude is homoiosis, which means likeness after the likeness of God, after the resemblance of God, or after the appearance of God. When you curse men, you're cursing God's image. And we found out previously, he doesn't take it lightly when you murder yourself. And God does not take it lightly when you curse men. Okay? All right. Seven in Hebrew thought means image, it means likeness, it means resemblance of God. God is the spirit, God is an unapproachable life. God is God created man in his likeness. Now, let me go over there again because we're going to get to a point. He's an invisible God. He's a, he's a, he's an invisible God. He's a great light. He's an unapproachable light. He's a spirit. Now, there's a word, and I want you to write this word down, please. It's, it's anthro, A-N-T-H-R-O-P-O, M O R P H I S M A N T H O P O M O R P H I S M Anthropomorphism. It may be a big word, but it's a very easy summary to it. Listen to this. Human characteristics and qualities to non-human beings, objects, natural or supernatural phenomena. We're going to describe God by scripture as having a divine anatomy. We're going to, I'm going to show you in scripture what God himself reveals his divine anatomy. When you look at me, you see this big head. <laughs> you see these eyes. You see the nose, you see my anatomy, mouth, ears, chin, throat, chest, heart, arms. 
hips, thighs, legs, and then you see what? Feet. Okay? We are created in the cellum of God. Let's look at some scriptures where God identifies not only his cellum, but his divine anatomy. Turn to, with me, to the book of Psalms, chapter 11. Let's look at verse 4. Psalms chapter 11, verse 4. What does God look like? Psalms chapter uh, 11, verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes, his eyes behold his eyelids. And they try the children of men. Look what the Bible says. His eyes and his eyelids. God is identified as having a divine anatomy. Even though he is an unapproachable light. Even though he's a great light. Even though he's an invisible God. But there's a, a seldom there. Because the Bible says his eyes and his eyelids. I like that. They do what? Try the children of men. That means that his eyelids, in Hebrew, is Bashan. His eyelids test, examine, and try, and prove the hearts of men. Now, that is awesome, just by his what? Eyelids. Then the Bible describes God as having an imagery of eyes. How many of you blessed by that? Yes. Look at Psalm chapter 33, verse 18, please. Psalms 33 and 18. Psalm chapter 33, verse 18. Behold the eye, the eye, the eye of the Lord is upon them that what? Fear him, and upon them that hope what? In his mercy. Bible keep describing God as having eyes. Let me give you another scripture. Genesis chapter 6. Let's look at verse 8. Poor for boy. <laughs> ah. Genesis chapter 6 let's look at verse 8 but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord there it is in the eyes of the Lord Seven, divine anatomy okay? we looked at the eyes now does God identify his divine anatomy by having a nose yes Turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 15. Let's look at verses 5 and 8. In the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 5 through 8. 5, the depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom of the stone. Verse 6, thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, they the hands again, have dashed in pieces the enemy. Verse 7, and in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sittest forth thy wrath, which consumed them at the stubble. Now watch verse 8 real closely. And with the blast of thy nostrils, and with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together, and the flood stood upright as a heap, and the depths were concealed in the heart of the sea. The Hebrew word for nostrils is af, af. Nostrils mean no. With a blast of his nostrils, he caused the Red Sea to part itself. Look what it says. The waters gathered together and the flood came. Now wouldn't, you, wouldn't that be good if you could do that? <laughs> this is the God we serve. Man, yes, it is. Almighty God. Someone said today, a God of war. And listen, it's the wisdom of a king to seek knowledge. It's the glory of, of God. Let me get the scripture right here now. I'm human. It is the glory of God to conceal the thing. It's the wisdom of a king to search it out. That's it. That's what I want. Okay? All right. Let's look at Psalms chapter 18, verse 6 and 8. Psalms 18, verse what? Six and eight. Verse eight says, There went up a smoke out of his nostrils. It didn't say nicotine or cigarettes or Marlboro or cell or cool. All right. 
The Bible says there went out a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. The Bible is identifying as a divine anatomy having smoke come out of his nostrils and fire coming where? Out of his mouth, devoured coals were kindled by it. We serve a God when it's wrapped all smoke comes out of his nostrils. Fire comes where? Out of his mouth. You know, many times I see so many believers, they're praying to God, but they don't even have a true realization of what does he look like. He doesn't look like Buddha. He doesn't look like Babel. He doesn't look like Harry Krishna. He doesn't look like some creature, some beast. He's a divine being. We are created in his what? Cellar. Ears. I'm being descriptive of the divine anatomy of cellar. Ears. Psalm chapter 34, verse 15. Psalm chapter 34. Let's look at verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears, his ears, his ears are open unto their what? Unto their cry. Isn't that good? Amen. God is being descriptive of his what? His ears. Mm-hmm. His cell. His divine anatomy. Look what the scripture says to us. God hears the cries of the righteous. <laughs> many times we pray, Father, bend your ear down and heal my cry. How many of you ever prayed that? I mean, when you're in a desperate situation, you want God to take that big ear in your ears and just hear what you have to say. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's look at peace. Turn to Psalm chapter 31, verse 16, please. Psalm chapter 31, verse 16. The Bible says, Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy what? For thy mercy's sake. Look at Psalm chapter 80, verse 3. Psalm chapter 80, verse 3. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face, thy face, God has a face. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be what? Saved. What about a mouth? Turn to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 20, please. Isaiah chapter 1, let's look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth, the mouth, the mouth of the Lord have what? Spoken it. The Hebrew word pay, P-H, means mouth. Divine anatomy, sell them. I'm creating imagery here. The appearance of God, what does he look like? An unapproachable light so far. A great light, an invisible God. A God that no flesh man, no mortal man can look in his face. Okay? Turn to Isaiah chapter 48, please. Let's look at verse 3. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 3. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth, they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them, I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. God speaks. There's a verification of a mouth. Divine anatomy. Sell it. What about lips? Turn to Isaiah chapter 30, please. I, the book of Isaiah chapter 30. Let's look at verses 27 and 28. Isaiah chapter 30, look at verse 27. Behold the name of the Lord coming from far. Burning with his anger and the burden thereof, his lips. I bet God got some big lips. <laughs> wow. And he just loves us and he just want to kiss us with him, don't he? Yeah. Amen. All right. His lips are full of indignation. And look what he says. His tongue. Have a devouring fire. That's what it is. 
The Hebrew word for lips is sofa, which means indignation. Out of God's lips comes indignation. It comes anger, wrath, and rage, what? Out of his lips. And his tongue is what? A devouring fire. While in divine anatomy, the scripture is complete. Lips and tongue. Oh, can't you see this thing? Each one of us was created in his image, in his talent. You have a natural flesh anatomy. God has a divine anatomy. We look like him. Let me say that again. We look just like Big Daddy. Yes. Yes. All right. Look at verse 28. And his breath. Whoa, he got some breath. <laughs> and his breath as an overflowing stream which reached to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with seeds of vanity, and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people causing them to error. Now let's look at that closely. Verse 27, it talks about the lips and the tongue. In Hebrew, the tongue means a devouring fire comes from his tongue. Breath in Hebrew is ruach, which means wind or breath. Is that right? Many of us have breath. How many of you wake up every morning with good breath? <laughs> God's breath, the word says, it's an overflowing stream that does what? Bring the enemy nations into submission. He don't have, not, listen, not by might nor by power, but by his what? Yeah. Spirit. God can use his breath. Saints, <sighs> we serve a mighty God. Amen. Why would somebody want to serve Buddha or Hinduism? Hello, saints of God. I remember in Vietnam when the AK-47 started flying, some of the guys that told me they were Buddhists or the Hindus, when they got bullets about flying, the first thing they said, Jesus, help me! Jesus? <laughs> what happened to Buddha? When a man is in trouble, he may say he's an atheist, but when he's in a difficult situation, he'll call on the name of Jesus. I've seen muscle men in the, in the U.S. Army Corps in Vietnam, muscle strong men, you let them mother start crying. Then I've seen some mama, mom calling your mama like your mama gonna run 10,000 miles to help you. Yeah. We serve a mighty God. Amen. Look at his anatomy. When I look at Sister Matar, I see his image. When I look at my brother, I see Stella. When I look at my sister, I see his image. Look at his anatomy. He's a mighty God. Yes, he is. Turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Let's look at verses uh, 10 through 12. Arm and hand. Arm and hand. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10 and 12. Please. Verse 10, Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand. Anatomy. And his arm. A divine anatomy. Shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. Verse 11, He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. And, every, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? And me out of heaven will span. Now, that's poetry right there. And comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills and balances. Wow. Thank God. Thank God. Do you know who you're praying to through, through his son, Jesus Christ? When you say, our father, do you understand your father's son? You, do you understand that imagery, the divine anatomy, almighty God, there's no God like him? 
billions of galaxies out there, there's no God like Him. Amen. Now, in His divine anatomy, God has feet. Brother, God has feet. Well, you created this other. Turn with me to Second Kings, chapter 19, please. Second Kings, chapter 19, please. Okay? Second Kings, chapter 19. Let's read verse 23 and 24. Verse 23. By thy messengers thou shalt, thou hast reproached the Lord, and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I am come up to the height of, of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the lodgings of his border, and into the forest of Carmel. Now look at verse 24 closely. I have dig and drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet, with the sole of my feet, have I tried up all the rivers of the besieged places. God prophesied that he dried up the rivers with the sole of his feet. Can you see this house? He's such a mighty God to the point if he set his feet in the river, just the sole of his feet, the river will dry up. Over the years I've heard so many things. What does God look like? I believe that God is not only releasing apostolic prophetic revelation, but God is bringing an awareness to the body of Christ. We'll begin to veil this thing, that we'll begin to see things in Scripture that we have never seen before, because this is the time and this is the season. Big as my feet are. <laughs> what river could I try off? <laughs> we serve a mighty God. Yes. yes. We serve a God who, who's, listen, who's solemn, divine and manly. We look like him. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 1. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 1, please. In Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captains by the river Gabar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Now, does everybody see the fourth month? I'm going to kind of shift off the anatomy and come back. On the Hebrew calendar, in the Hebrew calendar, this, the fourth month is called the month of Thomas. Every month on the Hebrew calendar is connected with one of the twelve tribes. From June, around June 24th to toward the end of July is the month of Tammuz, or also connected with the tribe of Reuben. Okay? It was during the time, this period right now that we're living in, in Ezekiel chapter 1, the fourth month, when Ezekiel saw visions of God. Now, isn't that wrong? Is it safe for me to say that with this month, we should be praying that God will let us see his glory. Okay? This is also the month, and this time we're in right now, where the children of Israel created the golden calf for false worship. Is this a time where we should elevate, elevate our worship? Yes. Ask God for greater dimension and levels of authority and glory and praise and worship? I think it is. Okay? Now, here's the point that we're getting ready to make. Turn to the book of, look at verse 26 of Ezekiel chapter 1. Look at verse 26 of Ezekiel chapter 1. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Has the appearance of sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was like the likeness, has the appearance of a man. Above upon it. Likeness has the appearance of a what? Man. This is the month that Ezekiel saw visions of God. This is the month that Ezekiel saw the glory of God. Now let's keep it in text. He saw the throne of God. He saw God's glory. 
But then he said, he saw the likeness of the appearance of a man. Did he see the son of man? Did he see uh, uh, his son Jesus? Or did he see the appearance of God in his divine anatomy? Let's look at it again. Right. He said he saw an abundant likeness of the throne, but the likeness of the appearance of a man above upon it. Could it be the Son of Man on the throne? Or could it he saw an embodiment of God in his divine anatomy? Did he see an anthropomorphic appearance of God? Was God in the likeness of a man? Or did he see the Son of Man seated on the throne in that fish? Look at verse 28. As the appearance of a bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice, and I, and I heard a voice of one that what? Spake to us. I'm going to leave that with you. Was he the Son of Man, Jesus, or did he see the, the, the Son or the divine anatomy of God on the throne in the appearance of a man? And think also we were created in what? In his image. Now, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at Verse 16. Okay. Verse 16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, and preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. God was manifested in the flesh of his son who? Jesus Christ. Is that right? All right. He did what? Well, he, 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 he was justified in the spirit, seen of angels, priest of the Gentiles, and believed on what in the world. Now, let's look at this. God is an invisible God. God is a great light. Okay? No man can see, no flesh man can see God and live. Okay? God's divine anatomy is descriptive in Scripture. Now, the Bible does not contradict itself. God can appear in other forms that, that are tangible, like someone said today, and visible to man. But the Bible says, and it does not contradict itself, it says no flesh, no more man can behold him and live. The Bible is absolutely right. But there's a word called theophany. And theophany just basically means a manifestation of God tangible to the human senses. Let me give you an example. Turn to Exodus chapter 13. Let's look at verse 21 and 22. Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 and 22. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them in the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not only the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. A manifestation of God that was tangible to the human senses. God can appear in other forms. Yes. How many of you believe that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How many of you heard reports of a glory cloud appearing in churches? Maldonado oh, yeah, yeah. in Miami, Florida talks about the cloud that comes into the house and people start getting healed and begin to get set free and demons begin to do what? Manifest. Yeah. I believe that these are the days of glory. Yeah. I believe that these are the days that God is making himself known. Yeah. I believe that the days of women like Maria Woodworth Etta and Catherine Kuhlman and these great women of God who could minister and cancer would fall out of the church and the yeah. blind eyes would see and kidneys would be restored yeah. and people would get out of wheelchairs. I believe that this was prophetic signs of what God is about to do with his glory. Yes, and I believe that God is laying a foundation that we'll know who he is. Yes, we'll know his divine anatomy. 
and to know who we are in Christ. We will know that we were created in His image. We will know the authority that we are supposed to walk in as priests and as kings upon this earth. And we are supposed to be walking in the meat and not feet. Hallelujah. Yes. We give you another big offer me. A manifestation, a tangible manifestation, where God appears as tangible to your senses. Because you're human. Turn to Job chapter 38, verse 1, please. Job 38 and 1. How many of you are blessed by that so far? Oh, yeah. Your father, you look like your father. All right. Job chapter 38, verse 1. The Lord answered Job out of a what? Whirlwind. What, what was tangible to the senses? A whirlwind, a tempest, a storm, a whirlwind, a seal before us. Yeah. Isn't that good? Okay. Different people saw visions of God in the mm-hmm. Isaiah 6 and 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. High and lifted up. Is that right? Isn't it amazing that God had to be removed before he could move in the prophetic? Some things that are blocking and hindering have to be removed before you can burst forth into your destiny. Okay? All right. Theophany. Jacob wrestled with an angel. For those of you know the scripture says that he had wrestled with God. So God can appear in what? Tangible form. All right. Let's recap. It didn't take long to do this teaching. Let's recap. He's a spirit. Yeah. He's an invisible God. He's an unapproachable light when he's in his fiery brood. He's a great light. We are created in his image. God has a divine anatomy. I, nose, ears, feet, yes. back parts yes. that Moses saw, hand, as well as what? Oh. Now, turn to Jeremiah chapter 23. I've got about two more scriptures for you. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Let's look at verse 24. How big is God in his divine anatomy? How big is he? Is he six feet? Is he seven feet? Is he ten feet? No. Look at verse 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill the heaven and the earth, saith the Lord? God says he what? He fills the heaven and he fills the earth. He's, he's humongous. He's bodacious. In Vietnamese, he's buku. He's big. Look what he said. I feel the heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth cannot contain him because he is so huge. Can you see in your hearts this morning a mighty God with an anatomy like this? Can you see your heavenly Father filling the heavens and filling the earth? What would you have to worry about? Why would you be upon the stress? Why do you fear when you serve a God of war? When you serve a mighty God whose lips of indignation and wrath, but his breath is an overflowing scream. His eyes run to and fro the whole earth. There's nothing hid from him. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of a bill collector? Why do we lie and say things like, well, I'm not home when you ask the phone? I know an old mother right now. She has an answer service. Bless her heart. When the bill co- she got her answer service goes like this. If you're a friend, God bless you. If you're a bill collector, pray that I can pay you. I'm in agreement with me. Pray that I can pay you. 
<laughs> All right. Let's look at First Kings. Give you one more scripture. Go to First Kings chapter eight, please. You know you can have fun in the Lord, man. Is that right? All right. Look at First Kings chapter eight. Let's look at verse twenty-seven. But God, but will God indeed dwell on earth? Behold the heaven and the heavens of heaven. Behold the heaven and the what? Heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less house that I have built. <laughs> when the church gets the glory cloud, when the church usher in the glory, and God manifests himself. He is much greater than what you see. That's right. Yeah. I love that word that says, Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Yeah. I love the scripture here. It said, The heavens of heavens cannot contain him. Pluto, Venus, Neptune, Uranus. Listen, there's nothing compared to God. Billions of galaxies, of, there's nothing compared to God. He's so huge, and he's so mighty. Oh, saints of God, did you see him? And I pray today the purpose of this message was to get your faith activated and stirred up to realize that you are serving a mighty God. You're not worshiping a statue. You're not worshiping some reptilian God, some lizard, or some ox, or some monkey. You're worshiping a mighty God, a powerful God, who looks like you, and he looks like you. And when that newborn baby is born, he looks like that baby. That baby is created in his. Thank you, Father. Let me end with this. Listen to this. Hallelujah. It is not possible to even begin to describe God. After all you see. Billions of galaxies that stretches over long distances that we cannot fathom him. So big. So why are you worried? What are you afraid of? When you're in trouble, you, you, you should be glad to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. deal with this situation. Yeah. I'm a king's kid. They don't know what they're messing with. Yeah. That's right. Give the Lord a praise. Yeah. All right, we want to move right along because of the time. Uh, we want to do something different today. We're going to call an altar call. Is that right? We're going to move right along faster because of the time. We're going to call an altar call. Uh, here's what's on my heart in the bedroom. Many of you don't honor your parents. Uh, many of the instructors spoke about that this week. And I was just laying there and I was just having impressions of some parents in wheelchairs and they being cursed and they being disrespected. Uh, uh, even, uh, you can't be submissive enough to even go to cut the front yard. I was just laying in the bed and these thoughts and these impressions were just flowing with me. You can't go by to help the mother cut the yard or, or wash the dish or just snap at them. You know, won't help them pay their bills. Are you holding things against them? Now, when we call this altar call, I'm not saying it's you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're involved in that. But I, we really need to talk about uh, your dishonoring our parents. Because we found out that I have a list of about 50 portals that can begin to open because of you dishonoring your parents. Now, altar call. You may not be coming for that. You may come to the altar for something else. Those of you who, 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 who would like to come, I'm going to ask you to come and form a line, please. If everybody's holy and going to heaven, it's okay. Okay? Anybody else? I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to lead you in, in, into prayer and lead you into prayer as a confession. Is there anybody else? The main core, the main core that was on my heart today is the way parents are being treated. Totally disrespected in some areas, and we're calling ourselves believers. Okay? Is there anybody else? Okay? Alright, let's pray. 
Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I ask you, Father, to forgive me if I mistreated anyone, living or dead. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, disrespect my parents, dishonor my parents, have hatred for my parents. I ask you to forgive me, Father. I want to make things right. I want my heart to be clear in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as I come to this altar, I'm, I'm coming for other reasons. Uh, there's a deepness in my heart that only you, Father, can bring deliverance and bring healing to me in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, here I am, humble, submissive, waiting on deliverance and waiting on healing in the name of Jesus. Could I ask some of the, the saints would they come and pray with me, please? Um, so the Jerry, the Carla, would you be willing to, to come and assist me in prayer? Some of the saints, please. Okay. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.